Good morning and welcome to our daily meditation drawn from the Centre for Action and Contemplation, uh, contributed to principally by the great American Franciscan spiritual writer Richard Raw. On this beautiful Saturday morning, uh, well, it's a bit cloudy now, but it was beautiful this morning when I went on my run, uh, and today is the 4th of April 2020. And on Saturdays, Richard Raw um, very helpfully summarises uh, the essence of the messages that he's contributed uh, over the previous week. But uh, the substance of his contribution today is entitled Practice, Death and Life. And he, he writes, Before we share our practice over the next few weeks, we invite you to join us in prayer for all those who are suffering as a result of COVID-19, those who have already lost their lives, and those who are healthcare workers attending to the sick. You can, contem you can dedicate your contemplative practice as a prayer for the benefit of all. And the prayer is this. God, we ask you that all who are affected by this virus may be held in your loving care. In this time of uncertainty, help us to know what is ours to do. We know that you did not cause this suffering, but that you are with us in it and through it. Help us to recognise your presence in acts of kindness, in moments of silence, and in the beauty of the created world. Grant peace and protection of all humanity for their well-being and for the benefit of the earth. Death and life are two sides of the same coin. You cannot have one without the other. Christianity, as well as Buddhism and other religions, suggests that the pattern of transformation is not death avoided, but death transformed. Christians submit to trials to learn that the only trustworthy pattern of spiritual transformation is death and resurrection, because Jesus told us that we must carry the cross with him. Buddhists do it because Buddha very directly said that life is suffering. Buddhism teaches us to skillfully discern the source of suffering, detach from our expectations and resentments, and end all suffering. Today's practice from writer Geshen Claire Greenwood comes from the Buddhist tradition and asks us to practice releasing the thought that things should not be this way. Greenwood writes, Buddhist wisdom points to the reality that suffering is an enduring and continual part of being alive. We are often sheltered in our own kind of psychological place where we are shielded from things like illness. Yet this kind of suffering can ultimately not be avoided. We will all, every one of us, face old age, sickness and death. Personally, one of the most distressing things to me about COVID-19 outbreak has been a feeling that things should not be this way. In reality, those things are and always have been this way. The suffering caused by illness and death is nothing new. According to a Buddhist legend, there was once a woman who sought out the Buddha after losing her baby to illness. Crazy with grief, she asked him for medicine to bring her son back from the dead. He replied that he would give her this medicine if she brought him back a white mustard seed from the house of a family that had never experienced death. The woman went door to door, searching for a family untouched by the loss of a loved one. Of course, she could never find such a family. She realised that death touches everyone, and realising the universality of grief and death, her suffering lessened. The story shows us that the feeling of things should not be this way is an additional and unnecessary pain on top of our inevitable suffering. We cannot avoid old age, sickness and death, but we can remove the unnecessary assumption that all things should be otherwise and the psychic pain this assumption causes us. That is the end of the meditation, but I'd just like to share that I quite, I really like it when um, Christian writers uh, repair to sources of wisdom from other religious traditions. Uh, I know that there are some Christians who feel that we should just focus uh, on the Bible and draw whatever wisdom there is to be um, gleaned in this world uh, simply from uh, our biblical sources. But I don't feel that we are restricted to that. Um, you know, obviously, as a Christian, I believe that 
uh, the Christian scriptures are a true revelation of God. But I don't believe that, um, uh, that the Bible is the only place where um, the reality of God is disclosed, although I insist that, you know, I'm very much a Christian. I guess I take my cue from Thomas Merton, who describes, uh, before he made his Christian commitment, an encounter with a Buddhist, um, I think it was a, uh, a Hindu called uh, Chakravati, or Brahmachari, that was it, Brahmachari was his name. Uh, he'd met in New York. Uh, Brahmachari had come over from India to attend some kind of World Congress on religions. And uh, Thomas Merton, who was a student at Columbia University, met Brahmachari. And Merton was terribly keen about discovering about every single religion, um, uh, wanting to learn about as many religions as possible. And Brahmachari was very wise and said, you know, before you begin uh, an in-depth study of all these uh, other religious traditions, what you need to do is to acquire a profound understanding of your own uh, religious tradition, the one into which, as a white male Westerner, you've been inducted, Christianity. Because it's only by plumbing the depths of your own religious tradition that you will be able to discern the connections that exist between your own religious tradition and the wisdom that is contained in the others. And uh, I think that there's a very great deal of truth in that. And of course, Thomas Merton was way ahead of his time in tracing the regularities between um, the wisdom, particularly about prayer, uh, of the Christian mystical tradition and uh, the approaches to prayer um, expressed by the other religious traditions. So I just offer you that as food for thought.